Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about dishwashers, and we'd like to thank Merv Serve for liking and sharing the podcast. Josephine Cochran created the first automatic dishwasher in 1886, and it used a hand-operated pump. Mm -hmm. So she wanted a machine to wash her dishes faster than her servants could and not to break them. (laughs) And she couldn't find a machine anywhere that would do this, so she decided she was going to build one. She designed it. She built it. She showed it off in the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, Hmm. and it was a hit with restaurants and hotels. So she created a company to produce them, Mm -hmm. and that company became KitchenAid. Oh, interesting. If you plan on replacing a dishwasher, for most projects, you're just going to replace the size that you already have existing. Unless you're remodeling your kitchen. Right. And then you can go custom, or or you can then decide, you know, what model do I love, rather than just trying to fit it in. Which I didn't know they came in different sizes until I bought my condo. Right. I I had a tiny little dishwasher. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so standard sizes in the U.S., 18 inches and 24 inches wide. 18 is considered compact, 24 standard. And then in Europe, they're mm-hmm. actually smaller. Hmm. They don't come those standard sizes. But before you start shopping, you need to know the width, the depth, and the height of the old unit. And that can vary depending on your cabinets and countertops right. and how it was designed. The height can vary from around 32 to 35 inches The legs are going to be adjustable, so you can fine-tune that. The depth, 18 to 24, and 34 high, 24 wide, 24 deep is a very common size. Uh And decide ahead of time what the look is. So the front of the dishwasher, do you want that flush with the cabinet frame? Or let's say you have an overlay style to your doors where they're on top of the cabinet frame so they Uh stick out further. Do you want the dishwasher out further or do you want it even with the countertop? Okay. So you can kind of fine tune that and you can adjust it slightly when you screw in the brackets on it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can kind of fine tune that when you put it in. For the finish of the door, you can get real basic colors like almond or beige, black, white, stainless steel, and you can also... Not harvest gold anymore? <laughs> oh, man, I, I found a couple really cool, old-fashioned looking dishwashers. Well, that's like that my have... parents went, growing up. We had yeah. a harvest gold refrigerator and dishwasher. Right. But I think the stove was green. Really? Sure, yeah. Avocado green. Right. <laughs> so if you see integrated, that means that the dishwasher can accept a front panel and you can match that to your cabinets. Oh. If you have fully integrated, the controls are hidden and the panel covers the entire front so you can match your cabinet doors perfectly. Mm -hmm. If you see partially integrated, you've got the control panels, they're visible on the top, and then you have a custom panel on the lower part of the door. Hmm. For the controls, you have front control or top control. With the front controls, they're always in view so you can monitor what's going on with your cycles, how much time is left. With a top control, or it's called hidden controls, the controls are actually on the top lip of the door. So when you close the door, they're hidden. You can't see them, (laughs) which is weird. So this gives a real clean look. It also adds child safety. Some of these are going to have... A t- I, I tell you, as a kid, I loved pressing the buttons. Oh, on yeah. Them. Yeah, there's nothing Because there were like actual buttons on yeah, there. And they click. Yeah, and they clicked. Yeah, that was great. So with these hidden uh, controls, what's interesting is some of them will have like a little LED display so you know how much time is left. Some of them have a little light that shines on the floor huh. so you know the cycle's still running and wow, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't try to open it. If you see on the model descriptions, A-H-A-M place settings, and then they're going to give you a number... That's the amount of place settings that will fit inside this dishwasher. And AHAM is the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers. So they've decided that one place setting consists of a dinner plate, a dessert plate, a dessert spoon, a soup plate, a soup spoon, a glass, a teacup, a teacup saucer, a teaspoon, a knife, and a fork. Wow. So that's quite a few dishes. That's one place setting. Most manufacturers are saying a family of four would want a 12-place setting capacity. And I was reading a bunch of different reviews, and they said that it definitely varies by unit or by manufacturer. Right. So one place setting on one might be a little different size than another. For the inside of the dishwasher, they're primarily going to come in stainless steel, porcelain, and plastic. With the plastic, those are going to be in your less expensive models. 
With stainless steel, this is going to be more resistant to high heat if you have sanitizing cycles. Stainless steel is going to hold the heat longer, so it actually dries your dishes faster huh. if you have the stainless steel interior. They clean up easier, they last longer. Stainless steel is going to resist odors and stains, and it's going to be quieter than plastic. Really? When you're comparing units and how loud they are, you want to look at the decibels. So the abbreviation is going to be a small d and a capital B. Uh -huh. And some models you're going to see a small d, a capital B, and a capital A. And that A is called weighting. And so this is filtered to adjust how humans hear sound and how they perceive sound pressure. Interesting. So, so it's a more exact uh, measurement of decibels. Okay. So around 40 decibels is on the low end of a dishwasher. So that's pretty quiet. 50 decibels is considered the normal conversation level, uh -huh. and a difference of one decibel is 30% louder. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Four decibels is twice as loud. Huh. So they say units over 50 decibels are actually hard to have a conversation. Yeah. 45 to 50 is pretty common, but any drop of a couple of decibels below that 45 uh -huh. is substantially quieter. So that's Which what I didn't know that when I bought my dishwasher, right. that they came louder. Right. <laughs> that, so, that you could pick one? Yeah, because mine's pretty loud. <laughs> Love it, but it's pretty loud. Yeah. So it's funny. If, you know, if, if you're using it and it's in an area where you're going to be watching TV right. or having conversation, yeah, you have to, uh, yeah, to a couple crank that decibels. volume. <laughs> Another thing to look at when you're comparing models is the type of filter. So a manual they have fil a filter. So if you have a manual filter, obviously you actually, I didn't yeah. look at this when I bought mine. <laughs> so you actually have to remove a manual filter because food accumulates in this huh. and it grabs it and holds it so it doesn't get back on the dishes while during the rinse cycle. Right. And your owner's manual is going to give you a guide for the cleaning routine. You've got to remove this, rinse out the filter. And some filters are actually connected to a cover, and you've got to remove all of this. Huh. A hard food disposer works like a garbage disposer, so this is going to pulverize any food particles so it can be flushed down the drain. Okay. And a hard food disposer, sometimes you're going to see units that are called self or have self cleaning filters, mm -hmm. and so that's just grinding up the food. And they're going to be slightly louder than something with a manual filter. Hey, so maybe and, that's what I got. Right. <laughs> yeah, could be. Well, probably. <laughs> So your hard food disposers, it's going to keep the dishwasher cleaner. It helps prevent clogs. You don't have to rinse and clean the dishes off as much as with a manual filter if you, if you don't clean it that often. And then most manufacturers say that the hard food disposers are going to last, those models are going to last much longer. Right, because like before, like old models, you'd have to basically wash the dishes before you put it into the right, yeah, dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, and now with these hard food disposers, you just throw it in and it all goes down, it gets ground, uh -huh. and then just goes out with the... Life is good. Right. <laughs> Some models are going to have leak or flood protection. This is a small pan to catch a leak, and then there's moisture sensors in there that's going to either display an alert or stop the unit. If it has flood protection, this is a device that's connected to the water inlet, and if there's a leak in the unit, then it's just going to shut off the dishwasher. Oh. If you see models with soil level sensors, they're analyzing the particles in the rinsed water and they automatically adjust the cleaning cycle, so how much power you're using to get your dishes clean. Wow. It's automatically going to adjust the water level and the spray and it's going to keep adjusting till the dishes are clean and you've used the least amount of water and energy rather than just having a fixed cycle wow, where that's we're super using fancy, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting. A couple other features you can get are temperature and detergent sensors. So this is adjusting automatically the best cleaning temperature, the amount of detergent based on the load size and the soil levels. Really? So they're analyzing the particles in the rinse. You can also get Energy Star models. So this is using less energy, usually about 12% more energy efficient than a standard model, and it's using 30% less water. Oh, which is pretty good. interesting. If you see models that are marked CEE Tier 1, uh -huh. This would be the equivalent to Energy Star. It's just a different group. So CEE is the Consortium for Energy Efficiency. And SEHA established these tiers of performances for appliances. Okay. And you can actually get a Tier 2, 3, or 4, and that's even better than a Tier 1. There's a lot of letters you have to pay attention to on the label. Huh? <laughs> and the SEHA, uh -huh. that's the Super Efficient Home Appliance Initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Some models have flexible folding or adjustable tines and adjustable or removable racks. And so this makes it a lot easier to load dishes, odd-shaped pots and pans if you have tall because glasses. it's kind of an art 
to load right. a dishwasher. <laughs> right, and with some of these new interiors, it's interesting how the tines are pretty cool. So you can either put them at angles, you can totally flatten right. them down so you can throw a pot in there. Mm -hmm. Some of them will come out well, with the tines. You can actually fold them over to like grab stuff like yeah, glasses so it's not and things. Rolling around in Right, there. exactly. And with these removable racks, they can come out and then you can drop in like those, you know, casserole bowls right, or things yeah. like that. So a lot better design than the, you know, old they ones. <laughs> yeah. Third racks are a thin sliding organizer for all your knives, forks, spoons, anything flat that you're putting in your dishwasher. And it so almost. Kind of like those bins? Things. Well, it almost looks like a utility drawer organizer where you're putting all your knives and forks. It groups them, but it separates them all, so nothing's, so you know... So it doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> it looks like it, except like, it separates them all, so, right, so they're well, not on top like of each other. when it's in your drawer, they're all on top of each other. Uh, right, imagine them all on their side, on, right. Right. on their edge, and, and separated. Separate. Yeah, amazing. So you can, so, so it cleans really like good. nothing like the utility drawer. <laughs> and this is sitting right on the top, so this drawer is at the very top of the dishwasher, so it pulls out. It, so what it, is it called? A third rack? Third rack. Yeah. So it, you it, should look this up. Yeah, it does a great job. A new style in dishwasher is a drawer dishwasher, mm -hmm. and this comes in a single or a double drawer. Which I didn't and, know these existed until we started this research. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And that double drawer design can be a standard size overall, uh -huh. but it's going it's not going to hold as much because it's it's divided into two parts. Right. And you can either run it individually or simultaneously. So two drawers. Right. And you can also get the single drawer, and it's much smaller. So if you barely use a dishwasher, right. or, or you, you know you don't use it that often, but you want one, right. this is going to be much smaller. And generally, they're going to be like 22 inches deep, 16 inches high, 24 inches wide, mm -hmm. and it can vary. And then you can have a cabinet below it. Or in some kitchens, you could have this on the base cabinet below the sink, right. so in the, in the bottom part. With the double drawer design, it makes it much easier to load Mm -hmm. And this is great for if you have like a narrow kitchen, like those galley kitchens, right. and you don't have to have that large door folding right. all the way down right. where you can't get around <laughs> it. It's a tripping hazard. Right. So it's good for that. It's all. They also say it's very convenient for people with disabilities, that top drawer, because it's very easy to just drop straight down and oh, load it. Nice. You can get ADA compliant dishwashers, so that's the Americans with Disabilities Act. All the controls are within arm's reach on the front of the unit. It can be operated with one hand, and nothing takes more than five pounds of force to operate. Uh -huh. The maximum forward reach is 48 inches, and a maximum of 15 inches downward reach to operate it, to load it, and to unload it. Hmm. You can get delayed start models, and this allows you to set the dishwasher to turn on automatically when you're either sleeping or at work or when the electrical rates are lower. Hmm. Wi-Fi models have remote control on your smart devices. So if you run out to work and you forgot to turn it on, right. you, can, you can tell it to turn on. You can get notifications when the dishwasher cycle is done, or you can get alerts if there's ever a block sprayer arm. Really? Or if you have a leak, which is pretty interesting. Right. Bosch has their home connect models. So this is going to alert you when the dishwasher is low on rinse aid or detergent tabs. <laughs> Whirlpool has a couple of models that work with the Amazon Dash and the Nest Learning Thermostat. Uh -huh. So if you set it up to turn on when you leave the house, when the Nest Learning Thermostat thinks that you've left, it tells the dishwasher to start. Does anybody else think this is spooky? <laughs> and then the Amazon Dash, you can have it order your detergent, right. and then it counts the number of times that you've used your dishwasher. It calculates the amount that's left in your detergent, and it'll <laughs> automatically order more detergent for you. Oh, if it would only load itself, that'd be great. <laughs> GE has a dishwasher app, so it works with the Amazon Dash also. Miele, so it's M-I-E-L-E-L-G, they both have Wi-Fi connected smart dishwashers, and that Miele, they've got a dishwasher with LED lights inside. <laughs> they also have a model, if you knock twice on the front panel, uh -huh. the door automatically opens. Wow. And they've got another great model that once the cycle is done, uh -huh. it automatically opens it slightly, so it speeds the drying. Oh. Some dishwashers just have spray arms for rinsing and washing your dishes. Others are going to be adding water jets, mm -hmm. and this is going to create a lot more force for cleaning off, you know, buildup on your dishes. Right. Some are going to have a specific wash zone where you're going to put the dishes that need heavy cleaning, and it's focusing all of those jets right there in that oh, area. Nice. Extra rinse or rinse and hold options let you load the dishes, and it's just going to rinse it off for a couple of minutes, and that's going to prevent food from sticking and then you'd run a full cycle when the unit's full. Oh. 
that'd be nice for my parents. Because my mom's got like a real problem. Like it has to be completely full before she runs the right. dishwasher. Like there's been times that every fork has been used. It's right. dirty. It's in the dishwasher, but because it's not full, she hasn't run the dishwasher yet. So they have to use chopsticks. No. So we have to take the dirty <laughs> fork out of the dishwasher. And wash it? Wash it. Oh, that's great. Use it, and then put it back in the dishwasher. <laughs> Funny. When you see a steam cycle, this is going to vary between manufacturers. Some are using this like a rinse and hold cycle, so you're just loosening sticky or dirty dishes. Okay. And then some, their steam cycle is part of the regular cycle, but it gives you extra cleaning power to break up food debris. Hmm. And then some manufacturers, their steam cycle is used for fragile glass or fragile dishes. So you definitely want to compare the specifications when you're looking at different models. Okay. Some units are going to have an NSF sanitizing cycle. So this is a final rinse at a high temperature, 155 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter. And this is designed to kill 99% of all the germs and bacteria on your dishes. So especially if you have baby bottles or cutting boards, right. this does a nice job of killing germs. The water heater usually has to be set at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's going to help the dishwasher get it up to 155 degrees or hotter. What does NSF stand for? So that's the National Sanitation Foundation. Huh. If your unit has half load options, this is going to run in a specific area like the upper rack. Mm -hmm. So it's using less water and it does a shorter cycle, but you have to load it in a specific area. Probably, so it's, yeah. So it's important. Well, well, it's weird. You really have to read your manual right. how to load this and what the cycles do. A speed wash or echo cycle is going to use all the spray arms or jets but less water and faster cycles. So if you have dishes without a lot of sticky stuff on it, they're not right. that dirty. Different dry settings. So units with stainless steel racks are going to hold the heat longer. You can use less energy to dry your dishes. And some units are going to have fans to help dry the dishes with less energy. Some models have settings to dry without heat to save energy. If your unit has a plate warmer setting, you can put all your load all your clean dishes in there, uh -huh. and it's going to heat up your dishes so you can serve food on a warm dish. Wow. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> Weird. Rinse aid dispensers automatically open up and measure out the amount needed for your wash cycle. So your rinse aid, this helps the dishes dry faster. It has special surfactants to lower the surface tension of water, so it's going to spread out the... So rather than droplets okay. that leave marks on your glasses and mm -hmm. dishes... This allows water to spread out in sheets and roll off the surfaces much faster. So it works like Rain-X. You know, we did that one video on Rain-X on the car auto windows. Oh, sorry, so when it's windshield? raining, yeah, you don't yeah. have to use a windshield wiper. Huh. It works just like that. <laughs> a couple other features you can get are china, crystal, or glass cycles. So these are going to be shorter wash times, and they're using cooler water. Okay. You can also get child locks, so it's going to prevent opening of the unit or changing the controls. <laughs> Some dishwashers, especially in Europe, have a special compartment for dishwasher salt. What is that? <laughs> so this, has a, this is like a built-in ion exchange system, so just like a water softener. And the salt, you're recharging the resins in the system. Where do you get the salt? At your dishwasher salt supply store. <laughs> and on most units with this system, there's going to be a sensor. So it's going to let you know when you have to add salt to it. And this is going to prevent lime scale from building up on dishes and glasses. Hmm. When you're loading your dishwasher, if you group it properly, it's going to do the best job of cleaning. And the manufacturers are going to give you their loading configuration in the owner's manual. So which you is... have some studying to do before you use a dishwasher. <laughs> well, they run a lot. Of, it was right. interesting to read some of this research. They run a lot of tests to find the best results, right. so how to load it. Mm. You want to make sure that what you're putting in there is dishwasher safe. But in general, you're loading your plates and your bowls so the dirty surface is being hit by either the arms or the jets. You want the pots and the pans angled downward so they get sprayed, mm -hmm. and then the debris is draining out. Cups and glasses, usually best on the top rack. And you want to put them between the tines, not on top of them. Right. And then if you have folding tines, you can wedge glasses between them or small items between them from mm -hmm. moving around. You want to alternate your spoons and knives up and down to prevent them from nesting. Really? And then if you have areas where you have the little pockets mm -hmm. for your silverware, you want to mix up the knives and f spoons and forks. You don't want to group all the knives together, all the right, spoons together, because right. they'll nest. And then don't put bronze, pewter, cast iron, or wood in a dishwasher. And if you have silver and stainless steel, you want to keep those separate. You don't want them to rub next to each other because there's a chemical reaction. Huh, interesting. 
To clean the inside of your dishwasher, you never want to use bleach. If you have a stainless steel interior, it will actually corrode stainless steel. Huh. GE recommends Lemmy Shine, so it's L-E-M-I Shine, mm -hmm. and this is going to break up mineral deposits. Whirlpool recommends a fresh, A-F-F-R-E-S-H. Hurry Clean, H-U-R-R-I Clean. This is a combination of washing soda and citric acid. Right, I've used that. And then Dishwasher Magic. I've used that. <laughs> <laughs> Whirlpool also recommends just take two cups of white vinegar in a cup or a glass, put it on the bottom rack, and run your dishwasher through a complete wash cycle. Hmm. Then you're going to let it air dry. Some pros were recommending run a cycle with vinegar, then pour a cup of baking soda in the bottom of the unit, let it set overnight, and then run another wash cycle. Interesting. Some top-rated dishwashers, GE, Whirlpool, Miele, it's M-I-E-L-E, -E, KitchenAid, and Bosch, B-O-S-C-H. Mm -hmm. And then you should check out Big Chill Retro Dishwashers. They have the look of the 1950s dishwasher, mm -hmm. and then they have stoves and refrigerators to match. Okay. So, so really interesting. And then they have all types of colors. So a couple of their colors... Buttercup yellow, mm -hmm. pink lemonade, cherry red, and beach blue. Nice. And then if you're looking for a double drawer dishwasher, Fisher and Paykel, and it's P-A-Y-K-E-L, and this was top rated, although it's the only manufacturer I saw that was making <laughs> a double drawer dishwasher. How do you always say that you found her? I did all this research. Cindy found the Big Chill well, Retro I mean, Dishwashers. Like and, I, and, I, for and, I, and I'm also writing, you starting to write book four. You haven't wrote one word in book four yet. I'm still waiting. So it's probably going to be our best book uh, yeah, yet. Yeah, but, I mean, so you're going to take credit for that too? <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add? I would think about the size of your family, how many place settings you want it to hold, mm -hmm. or if you're doing small loads more frequently, does it have a small zone that you can clean right. just that area? Or you might want a drawer style. Mm -hmm. I would think about the decibels, how loud it's going to be, the type of filter it has, and then a unit with the most amount of cycles or spray arms and jets, it's going to do the best job. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 de